Welcome everybody to what will be the final installment in my Giants franchise rebuild on Madden 22. Thank you for all the support in this series. This is episode 89. We have successfully rebuilt the New York Giants into a dynasty. We've won six Super Bowls in this series. And the last thing I want to see is where quarterback Brian Petrovsky ends up as his career comes to an end. And I don't know how long that will take because he's 34 years old and quarterbacks in Madden do tend to play a long time. Some quarterbacks in recent seasons I've gone through are retiring after like 14 years. But I just have the feeling Brian's not going to hang up the cleats at 36 years old. What I want to see today is can he catch the GOAT? He's been closing the gap. And now just one Super Bowl separates Tom Brady and Brian Petrovsky. Brady did not add any titles in this series. He won six with New England and then won his first year in Tampa. And now Brian Petrovsky, at the young age of 34 years old, hopes that he can catch and perhaps surpass the GOAT and take his title. We will also take a look at the record books as we go through today's episode and see who ends up breaking records or cementing themselves inside the top 10 in all these different categories. We've had some phenomenal players in this series and it's always fun to see where they stack up compared to the greats at the end of their careers. I've always enjoyed looking at the career stats in football. And what I think makes football interesting compared to some other sports is it's harder to play a long time. Any position, you name it, if you can play at the top level, at an elite level for 10 years, you've already put yourself in a very special group. Randy Moss, for instance, is one of the greatest receivers of all time. I don't know that I can really fairly judge him versus Jerry Rice. I only saw Rice at the end of his career. But I think it's safe to say Moss is a top two, top three receiver all time. He had 10 1,000 yard seasons, which is impressive. But what is cool in football and playing franchise is these records and these benchmarks are reachable. You don't have to go through 20 years to break all these records. Now, some of them, because the quarterbacks in the modern era can play into their late 30s, early 40s. So passing yards is always a tough one. But I mean, getting into the top 10 for a lot of these categories is entirely reachable. Just to look at some career stats before we really get into the action today, Brian Petrovsky passed both 50,000 passing yards and 400 touchdown passes in his last season, number 12 for him. And every year, he's basically put up around 4,400 yards, a little over 30 touchdowns, and he's around 12, 13 interceptions a season. He's been doing this since his rookie season. Tavares Towns has become one of the best running backs in this series. And he's put together some really good years for us ever since taking over the starting role from Saquon Barkley. He's had at least 1,200 yards for the last seven seasons. Rayshon Graham. Does he play long enough to reach 1,000 catches? That is one of my favorite career milestones in any sport. It's that nice round number, 1,000. And not many players have done it. There are only 14 players in NFL history that have reached that mark. I think we're going to see many more reach that just with the pass-heavy nature of the league and a lot of these volume-heavy receivers. But to get into the top 10 or break some of these milestones requires a player to stay healthy and play a long time. Like Michael Thomas looks like he might be on a 1,000 catch pace, but... He's barely played now the last two years, and he's already 29. Cooper Cup just caught 145 passes last year. He's 29. It's hard if you don't get drafted at like 21, 22 years old to break some of these records. Quandre Holt, 114 sacks. 200 sacks by Bruce Smith is still the NFL record. 
I don't know how many seasons we'll need to go through today. It all hinges on when Brian Petrovsky decides to retire. So because this might end up being seven, eight seasons potentially, I'm not going to be handling the draft anymore for the Giants. Maybe I'll make an exception if there's a year I want to spend the first round pick, but that would be it. I'm going to look at still doing some of the free agent deals just so I can make sure that a few players stay on the team and the team doesn't completely fall apart in this sim. In some of these other long-term sims, I've just let everything go to see what happens, but I still want to hold on to a little control. Did I just skip past the re-signing players stage? I think in my head I was on staff week because they had the retirements there. Uh-oh. I'm going to have some work to do now in free agency and signing some of these players may have just gotten a bit more difficult. But hey, here is who is on the roster right now. And oh, I didn't get to use my franchise tag either. So this team has been regressing in recent years. We just haven't had the cap space to do a whole lot else. And we're keeping around a lot of veterans. Oh, Quandre Holt hit free agency. That's wonderful. I'm sure a lot of other key players did. Ty Scruggs. Yeah, I'm going to have some players to try and get back. Hey, Quinton's available again. We want to get Quandre Holt back. Now, free agency has been really weird in this game. Because I will put together huge offers here that don't even get me into first place. And then... Holt might end up taking like a $50 million deal to go somewhere else. I don't know why that is here in Madden 22. I don't want free agency to be easy. I just kind of want to understand why I'm losing battles better, if that makes sense. I don't have enough cap space to bring everybody back, but I'm going to try my best here. One of the difficult choices, though, is what do we do about Tavares Towns after all this regression? I don't think that he's the same player that you can build an offense around anymore as he's now more of an average running back at the number 18 spot. He's coming off a down season. Before even getting into this, I kind of thought that it might be it for Towns in this role. Going back to Quandre Holt, if I wanted to get into first place here, this is what it takes. Going up to about $83 million over three years. Aaron Donald signed a three-year, $95 million contract extension. So this is not quite there, but it's around what it takes. And I get it. And also Holt is 31, same age as Aaron Donald when he signed his deal. I think that this battle for Scruggs might be a little too difficult to make competitive. I gave an offer to Lacey just because it was a much easier situation to get into first place. So I'm handling free agency to hopefully help this team have a chance to keep winning Super Bowls. We'll see how it goes. Wow, we got Quandre Holt back. It took a massive deal, but we got it done. But we were rejected by Tyler Lacey. And going after Scruggs now is not going to be an option after losing that battle. So that's a tough start. And Patrick Mahomes will stay with Kansas City. Okay, he hit free agency. Jason Quinton to the Falcons. I felt okay not picking him up. We did draft his replacement last year. I let Nick Gresham go. If I had the chance to sign him now, I might try after losing out on Lacey. But I didn't think of him as a difference maker. Towns goes with him to Baltimore. So now we're going to try to get Shane Ross to return, and again, this is tough. I have to really go aggressive on these offers. I threw in the extra year, and I don't know that I'm going to even win this, even going up to what I am. Maybe we can bring in a veteran, though, like DJ Lauderdale, and keep that offensive line a key strength. And we have three new players on the team. Well, one returning, that is Shane Ross. Then we sign Terrence Brown, just the 77 overall safety. That's a very thin position for us. We had to just bring in somebody. Fifth year option on Daryl Dodson. I think I will pick this up, even though he hasn't been phenomenal yet. 
might be a late breakout player. Shane Ross is still injured, otherwise he would be number one here at center, but the offensive line should still be at least solid. And we have our playmakers, of course, but now we're looking at Alex Williams becoming the starting running back. We drafted him a couple years ago, and now he's hopefully ready to take over this spot. We're now simulating the draft entirely. Hopefully we can add somebody good on defense in this, just because it's starting to look a lot more average than it ever has like the team is no longer in the 90s for overall we're at an 86 and we still don't have much cap space to change that so here was the draft class without me doing anything they took a running back in the first round and then a tight end a receiver and a guard and then a running back and a receiver later so they didn't do much for the defense at all Jaden carroll running back oklahoma so we have a couple running backs now we can look to use he does have good catching ability so does alex williams though so i don't know if that was the right call here in the first round and then tight end was already a solid position we had two players who were really good and now we have three aaron duffy's a really good player but does it move the needle having the best tight end group in the league Wide receiver Donovan Judge, little undersized here, but speed and deep route running. Okay, we go with a guard, Miles Bolden, Curtis Edwards at safety. So this is not a bad draft, but are these the right positions and do these players move the needle for us and get us closer to a Super Bowl? That's my only thing. Here is the team entering this new season. I have no clue what to expect. The offensive line has a solid left side here. We have two really good receivers in Myers and Graham. Now we have so much depth at tight end, they want to play Aaron Duffy at like fullback. But is this good enough? You like the stars, Cunningham, Holt, Hearns, and Perkins. But... Four normal development starters. Dodson, who hasn't really broken out. Shaky safety situation. Can this get Brian Petrovsky to a seventh title? We sim to mid-season, and we are two and four. This is new. We haven't been two and four very much in this series, that's for sure. Brian Petrovsky is still playing... Like himself, 11 touchdowns, the two interceptions. The running game, though, is not what it once was, and it doesn't appear Alex Williams is sufficiently replacing Tavares Towns. He has been less efficient than Jaden Carroll, and he's fumbled the football three times already. I say we give Carroll a chance to play, then. Deion Myers leads us in receiving, it looks like, 453. And then for this defense... Less pass rush than you would expect. It's really spread out. And then four interceptions. Let's check those ranks. I like that they keep those now on the main screen here. Ooh, 15th in scoring, 22nd in rushing, 28th in passing. I simmed us to the playoffs, and we managed to turn the season around. Now an 11-6 record, and for the third straight year, I think, we take on Philadelphia in the wild card. So that's a massive turnaround. We started the year 0-4. Really couldn't find our way on offense, and that's a lot of points to be allowing on a weekly basis. But then things turned around as we took on the Minnesota Vikings. Blew them out, the Texans, and the Bears all in a row. Went on a nice winning streak, lost to Philly, won three more, lost to the Lions, and then won two to close it out. So, a big turnaround. We do not miss the playoffs. I don't think Brian Petrovsky has ever seen that happen before. And we ended up with a top 10 offense and defense by season's end. But I imagine this road to the Super Bowl could be a bit more difficult. 33 touchdowns on the year for Brian Petrovsky, as he did a really good job of protecting the football. Only six interceptions. And then, Jaden Carroll. So, what I did is I made him the starting running back, and then I made Alex Williams the third down back, Carroll also the power back, and that way gives you a pretty good split. 
If you're just trying to simulate and you want kind of a two back system, that's what I recommend. Just make the third down back different. Carroll gets around 300 carries, 1,000 yards, 15 touchdowns. Doesn't catch the ball a lot because that would have gone to Alex Williams more so. But that's a quick, easy way to give yourself a two back system. Maybe Williams is just not the guy. Maybe he's better off at receiver. You know, I don't know. His overall was good at running back. I kind of went with that. But uh, the more I play these games, the more I see that the Perry Cummings situation back in the Browns rebuild was like hitting the lottery in Madden. So lucky. And just the perfect storm. Deion Myers, 1,200 yards. Griffith and Graham break 800, but this is definitely a low for uh, Graham over the past 10 years or so. Well, 897 here. I mean, he's not going to be the same receiver that he once was. But hopefully, we can still see him catch a 1,000 passes. That would be awesome. Slow start to his career and then took off as one of the best in the league. I don't think he was on necessarily the same level, but how about one level under like a Devontae Adams kind of career arc where Adams, his first two years, I mean, he was dropping passes and Packer fans are pretty frustrated until he decided he was the best in the game. 12 sacks for Ben Bryant, 10 for Quandre Holt. And I don't know how you have nine and a half as an off-ball linebacker, but Kirk Galloway got it done. He was not a starting edge. I checked out that spot in the depth chart. So that's pretty awesome. Four sacks or four interceptions for Jamario Hopkins. Yeah, I don't think Daryl Dodson is that guy. I don't think he... His ratings suggest he could be. He's only 24 years old. I got to slow down a little bit but he hasn't been elite he's just been good brian petrovsky one off of offensive player of the year behind connor donnelly of the lions who have also been rebuilt in this series Jaden carroll thanks to that 1000 yard season does take home offensive rookie of the year we moved on from scott Faulkner, and now he wins the best kicker award whatever Check this out, though. Tyrone Richardson was second in Offensive Rookie of the Year voting, but he was also named the best receiver as a rookie. Nearly 1,200 receiving yards. That puts him, looks like, just outside the top 10. But it's cool seeing a rookie break out like this. I think that's always been a weakness in a lot of sports games is for how do you have rookies come in at a reasonable overall, but have the chance to break out and become one of the best very early in their careers. Tyrone Richardson found a way to do that this year. And just taking a look, he scored two touchdowns in both the games he played against us. All right, let's focus on the playoffs now. We won last year's Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. We lost the previous year to the Broncos and beat them the year before that. We're trying to make it a fourth straight trip. And I'll be seeing you there. As the Giants will take on the Baltimore Ravens. A battle of the two six seeds. That is an improbable run. An improbable Super Bowl. The Ravens won against the Broncos 10-6 to to get here. We had to beat Philadelphia, San Francisco, and Atlanta. And these weren't uh, the highest scoring games. So who would have thought... That Luke Cook had a chance to keep us from reaching the Super Bowl. But who would have thought after an 0-4 start that this would even be possible? Jaden Carroll, the rookie running back, had a nice day in the NFC Championship to secure our spot. That means we're playing for ring number seven. Before he could pass Tom Brady, he first needs to match the seventh Super Bowl win. We will skip ahead to the fourth quarter. So far, a low-scoring game, 7-3, to three, with the Ravens taking the lead and then us taking it back in the second quarter. 17-10, second half. We have ourselves a very close game. So we've got a little more Super Bowl action in this series. Brian Petrovsky is under center. 
He hands off to Jaden Carroll, the rookie of the year, who gets a couple. This is a big spot. Four-point game. And a throw on third down. Carroll, touchdown. And the Giants go up two scores. Intercepted by Terrence Brown on the next play from scrimmage. How about this? How big of a role do you think Jaden Carroll played in us turning this around? Looks like he had a pretty solid season, got a lot of development out of this. When I saw they were taking a running back, I was a little confused. And all the mock drafts we check every year, when I'm not even messing with the board, they have us taking a running back. So there's some sort of running back bias there. Carroll! That's a touchdown! Nice run! And the Giants open this game up here in the fourth quarter big time. Lamar Jackson is still in this league. So it would be him and Patrick Mahomes, I think, as the only two quarterbacks from the beginning of this series. I could be wrong. Maybe Mac Jones is out there or something. But I mostly see other quarterbacks that were drafted in the series. There is just a lot of work to do here for Baltimore. Jackson over the middle. Good catch and run. The Ravens have worked their way to our 21-yard line. Jackson to the air. Throws the Ravens inside the 10. I believe their tight end is Adam McDaniel, who was one of our backups at a point in this series. He's got six catches. Now a little end around, gain of a couple. They will run it. And the Ravens get a touchdown back, making this a two score game. Now we just have to hold on. Do we throw it here or trust the rookie Carroll? Carroll gets this one and he's going nowhere. An injury timeout now for the Ravens. Brady won his seventh title in Tampa, and that is where we are right now. Brian Petrovsky on second down. First down grab for Deion Myers. Run that clock. Petrovsky on first down. He's able to stay on his feet and is intercepted. He forced it. Going back the other way. Ravens football at the 37. Would have been better off taking the sack on that play. There are four and a half minutes to go now. Lamar Jackson caught. That's a first down to McDaniel. Four minutes to go in the ball game. Jackson to the end zone. Broken up by Cunningham. Pressure coming. They get to him this time. It's Gary at the 32. They could settle for a field goal here and still be okay. This is third and 18. Jackson up top and out of bounds. Good coverage over the top. This is a 49-yard try and Justin Tucker retired years ago. And this kick is good. So the Ravens need the stop, a touchdown, and the two-point try. This is intense now. It's an eight-point game. Can we close this thing out? It's Carroll on the carry, gaining five. This will take us to the two-minute warning now on second down. Jaden Carroll with nowhere to go, and it's decision time. They stay on the ground with Carroll, and he's got the first down. Now the Ravens got to spend their timeouts. That's a huge run. Carroll cuts it downhill. First down. The Ravens are running out of opportunities. They give it to Carroll once again. And he is right there at the marker. This is pretty much sealing it now. How about the rookie of the year, Jaden Carroll? What a role he's playing. And now, one yard to finish it. 
And this game is over. That is going to be ring number seven. I didn't see this roster at the start of the year and think that this was a team that had a great shot to go to the Super Bowl, especially when you then saw them at 2-4 and four on the season. The party has not ended yet for the New York Giants as they have won their seventh title of the series. We are now 7-2 and two in Super Bowls, and the rookie, Jaden Carroll, has played such a huge role for us this season. That is an awesome story. I didn't even draft him, and obviously I wouldn't have drafted him because running back wasn't even on my mind. But given the cutscenes here, I want to say that he's getting MVP. They're highlighting him in every scene. But you're of course also going to highlight the man who has tied Tom Brady now with his seventh Super Bowl title. That's a pretty good rookie season. Jaden Carroll, first round pick, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Super Bowl MVP. As the Giants get their 11th overall Super Bowl championship. Seven titles now for Brian Petrovsky as he wraps up season 13 at age 35. He could retire any season, including this one. I'd only be a little surprised if he did. So for Brian Petrovsky, is seven enough at age 35? Is he done? Terrence Brown, DJ Lauderdale, and Rayshon Graham have retired, but also Tavares Towns. He spent around seven years at the top of his game. One year away from the Giants to close his career, and then he retires. Will Wall, I remember him from the very first draft class in this game. Joe Burrow retired. Emmanuel Adkins. Rayshon Graham was the best receiver we ever drafted in this series. He was a part of all seven Super Bowls as well. He played one less year, it looks like, than Brian Petrovsky. He must have been our second draft class 2023 then. Yep, first round pick. Only a two-time Pro Bowler. He had a phenomenal career. I don't think here it's going to be easy to uh, see career stats. Can they add a column in the next Madden or something? Just a total at the bottom. I'd love that. I know he's not at 1,000, but I want to know how far off he was. Probably two years worth, though. Because he retired, I can't see his name on the career stats anymore, so I'd have to manually add those numbers up. For the running back leaderboard, Tavares Towns, a part of six Super Bowl titles with us in this series. And his final year in Baltimore wasn't bad. It was just really similar to his last year in New York. He's not a top running back anymore. He's just a decent one. If I added this up correctly, looks like we're at 465 catches for Rayshon Graham. So I'd say it was actually three years away from him being a 1,000 catch receiver. Okay, there are still a lot of quarterbacks that haven't retired yet. And that's why I want to move faster today. Because Petrovsky might still play five more years. I don't know. Joe Burrow retired. I know he was uh, an older rookie though. And a lot of these players weren't, so we got to keep it moving along here. Leading active rusher, Lamar Jackson. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Chase Young broke Bruce Smith's sack record, getting 204. Warren Griffith is now 30 years old and wants a pretty big five-year deal. I like Griffith a ton. You all know that. Tight end has gotten really solid on this team, though. We have Damian Jackson, and we have Aaron Duffy. A five-year deal, though, to a 30-year-old tight end at Star Dev. I don't think he'd be playing to the end of this contract, but I'm going to offer it, and we're going to free agency. You know what? Let's use the tag, because then it's a one-year deal. Patrick Perkins, 20 a year. I think I'll pass on that. 
So a quick look now at free agency, and we know this team is going to need a receiver after the retirement of Rayshon Graham. So there are chances to add some veterans here. I think Taj Beckett would be a really solid replacement. I like these ratings. He's got a lot of similarities with Rayshon Graham. I'll even go with a two-year deal. I don't need to go quite that high, though. If I'm in, like, the 90-point range, I like my chances of getting a uh, deal done after the first round. So it's all about finding where that point really is. There you go. How about some late career ring chasing for Geo Tull? We could bring him in, perhaps. And we have deals done, so we bring in a few new players. Tull, Beckett, and then defensive lineman Rayshon Overstreet. Just thought he was a better value than trying to bring back Perkins. He's a run stopper, primarily. The guard situation isn't looking as good either. One of the players we signed last year ended up retiring. So there's some work to do with this old line. Let's see if we can entice Bernie Pierman to come here for just one season. Fifth year option on Ben Bryant. We're not going to pick this one up. Hey, where's my advance button? How do I move on to the next free agent stage? Give me back my button. Oh, there we go. All right. I was hoping that there was no bug or something like... There are bugs in this game I've never seen. I'm sure of that. All right. The last draft I let the CPU do gave us a Super Bowl MVP and a Rookie of the Year. What do they do this time? They took a defensive tackle in the first round this time, then a corner, and came back with a running back again in the third round. A lot of receivers and offensive players in general. So Josh Gabriel, hidden development. Here is your Patrick Perkins replacement. I love this. That's what I thought they should do. Build up the defense a bit. I still think they're drafting too much offense. But I've certainly seen much worse drafting out of the CPU. Another hidden development running back. Michael Flemons. Do you think this just opens the door for Alex Williams to just go to receiver and stay there now? Flemons doesn't really have the receiving ability, so I'm not sure he's the best complimentary back. We could keep Williams in his role. Shane McAllister at tight end. And we got a 68 overall here. Lorenzo Billups from Texas Southern. Another deep threat. Here is a look at the roster as we enter our newest season. The offensive line is in pretty rough shape right now, I'd have to say. But Jaden Carroll was Rookie of the Year last season. Can't wait to see where he goes from there. Already up to an 83. And then Deion Myers. Can he stay on top of his game while Taj Beckett hopefully replaces Rayshon Graham? Defensively, I love the addition to Gabriel, keeping the D-line the strongest part of this defense. That's been a formula that's worked for well over a decade. So, let's see how this season goes. I simmed a mid-season and we haven't lost a game. We have the best passing offense in the league and we're scoring 35 points a game right now. And the defense is still really good. All this with an 85 overall roster. 14 touchdowns right now for Brian Petrovsky. Jaden Carroll still doesn't really have the efficiency on the ground, but the touchdowns are there. The yardage looks pretty good. And Taj Beckett does seem to be replacing Rayshon Graham pretty sufficiently. We sim all the way to the postseason now after a 7-0 start, and the Giants have gone 14-3. That should be a first round bye, and it will be. Patriots got it in the AFC. The Eagles have now made like four or five straight wild cards as well, so they've gotten to a pretty good point in this series, kind of surpassing Dallas. So last year started out poorly, recovered by the end. This year, just another dominant giant season. We've seen this stat line pretty much for Petrovsky, although that may be a career high in passing yards. Nope. He had 5,000 back in 2027. Who could have forgot about that? 
Jaden Carroll, 20 touchdowns, 1,500 yards. This is an excellent start to his career. I think next season is when you would start to see the efficiency, but that might have led the league right there in just his second year. Receiving, Myers over 1,000. Griffith had 15 touchdowns. Taj Beckett, great addition this year with 900 plus yards. And then Donovan Judge having a chance to be the slot receiver. Drafted him back near the start of the episode. And looks like he had 600 yards. Not bad. Alex Williams. Not really panning out how I expected. I thought we might see him be like super productive and kind of do some of the Perry Cummings stuff. But uh, he's Ty Montgomery. And that's about it. Quandre Holt, 12 sacks, 9 for Daryl Dodson, and 7.5 and for Ben Bryant, whose option I never ended up picking up. So, we already won one episode today, we're at 7. If Petrovsky is to pass Tom Brady, it sure seems like we're set up to possibly do that. The first playoff game here is against Green Bay. Can the Giants go back to another Super Bowl? Not this time. We drop the NFC Championship to the Eagles in overtime. And they will be advancing to the Super Bowl instead. Great games here by both quarterbacks. Darren Maddox, five touchdowns. So the Eagles have moved on from Jalen Hurts. Looks like Darren Maddox is their guy. I don't know that we've really spent much time uh, looking at his stats or anything. 41 touchdowns, 11 picks. He's a superstar. So he was drafted by Philadelphia, sat his first three years. How often do quarterbacks do that now? Well, if they're career backups, a lot. But he was the number six pick. Waited his turn, and now as a three-time Pro Bowler, has a chance to go on to his first Super Bowl. Devontae Branch at running back. Yeah, he's a 97 overall. This Eagles team has a really nice offense now. Justin Richardson, X-Factor. You got the stud quarterback, running back, and receiver trio. So, no wonder the Eagles have broken out like this. Russ Watson won Coach of the Year, but it's a hollow victory when you've won seven Super Bowls. Anything less is failure. Jaden Carroll was named the best running back, so... He's on a really interesting trajectory now. Really just coming out of nowhere. And it's the Philadelphia Eagles who take home Super Bowl 70. Darren Maddox, Super Bowl MVP, Offensive Player of the Year, 41 touchdowns. Phenomenal season for him. Brian Petrovsky is now one season away, most likely, from crossing 500 touchdown passes as he's at 470. 3,000 rushing yards for him. Jaden Carroll, 2,500 rushing yards in his first two seasons. Taj Beckett, 869 catches. Deion Myers at 608, and he's only at age 30. Could he have a chance to get to 1,000? Maybe. It would take five more good years, most likely. I know we're close to seeing the retirement, too, of a player like Quandre Holt, maybe even Isaiah Cunningham. Those are the leaders of this defense, and if we're to get back to a Super Bowl, you'd think it's when they're still active. So, we sim forward, and hopefully the retirements give us a chance to try it again next year. 2035 retirements. Christian Tolbert, the star left tackle. He's the only one from our team this season. But that's a big loss. Cunningham is 31. Griffith is 31. Hearns is 30. We have some free agents to take care of once again. We also have like $135 million in cap space. So this isn't too difficult I'll sign Cunningham to a three-year deal if he'll take it. He's an X-Factor. He won't regress too fast. Hearns at linebacker. I still like a three-year deal for him, but feeling isn't mutual, it looks like. The tag would be nice. Do I want to use it on Griffith again? 
He wants an even greater signing bonus, it looks like. Bernie Pierman, 3.6. Why do guards not want more money? I'll easily offer that. I'll stick to a one year, though. 6153, is that what that says? That's a lot of money. Is Daryl Dodson a $25 million a year pass rusher? He's never even reached double digit sacks. I think not. Let me tag Matthew Hearns. Now we have a ton of cap space, but I kind of want to see who's going to be in free agency. Ah, uh, Shane Ross is down to a 75 overall. The ratings don't look bad at all for a 75. I was going to sign him for depth, but it wasn't enough. They took out that regression screen, so I don't get to see that every year. But Brian Petrovsky looks like he has regressed a little bit. Doesn't have ratings at 99 any longer, but he's still an elite quarterback. And yeah, we can change out a uh, freight train, I imagine, for something else. Here we go. Edge rusher Geo McFadden. He's 31 years old, but he has 94 finesse moves. I would rather offer him a big deal. This isn't even going to reach $20 million a season. We are going to let Alex Williams go. I just don't think he was very good. And we will try to bring back Warren Griffith. I'm putting together a really nice three-year offer over $50 million. And we got to work on rebuilding this offensive line without Christian Tolbert. So we give an offer to Zaire Grubbs. There's the 28-year-old Joe Madsen at guard. Teddy Bayer at center. A lot of offers out there. We had to have won some of them. And we did win many. We just lost out, it looks like, for Joe Madsen at guard. There are still really good options, though, and interior linemen do not look for big deals. 185 points. I'm trying to blow the Cardinals away in this one. We also have the cap space to go make a move on defense. And why not go get a versatile player that can do it all? Try to sign Daquan Lincoln. And Lincoln decided not to come to our team, but we did get a few more players, including a reunion with kicker Frank Maddox, whom the Eagles took from our practice squad many years ago in series. Fifth year option already for Kirk Galloway. I think this time I do want to pick it up. This year, we drafted a wide receiver in the first round, Justin Rice, a 76 overall. I think at the very least, we have made these first round picks count. I'm impressed with that. We go defensive tackle next, Lamar Pemberton. But it doesn't look like we drafted many high overall players the rest of the way. I will say though, I like this pick. He's not a very good athlete, but he's strong and has power moves. I'll certainly take that at 66 overall. But you might have been able to do better in the second round overall wise. Frank Arthur, we did have to add a safety. I tried in free agency. Tyreek Sawyer. And a few more players here down the board, including a quarterback from Penn State. Maybe a new backup here with decent ratings to do just that. I like where this offense is. We bring in Rice, the rookie receiver. He can contribute right away. We rebuilt the offensive line a bit in free agency. We had plenty of cap space to do so. So we have a few new starters there that should be great. We have three star dev tight ends who are all starting caliber. And then on defense, I mean, it's not great, but it hasn't been great either. So at safety, I mean, we're not really doing a whole lot, but up front, we're still built to win there. The Giants have won the NFC East again with a 10-7 record. Not quite as dominant as a year ago. And no first round bye as that goes to San Francisco. We are the three seed this season. Brian Petrovsky threw 18 interceptions this year, but 32 touchdowns. Jaden Carroll, 1,300 yards, 9 touchdowns. 
actually a bit of a step back from his sophomore season that I wasn't expecting. Looks like though he broke a lot more tackles than normal, so that's moving in the right direction, and he caught a few more passes. In the air, wow, what happened to Dion Myers? He's not hurt right now. He played in week one and not again until week 18. Wow, he missed almost the entire season. And that meant Taj Beckett had to step up into a big role. And he did it with 1,300 yards. That's one of the best seasons of his career. That is huge. Without him stepping up, it's hard for us to get to this point. Now, Petrovsky threw over 30 touchdowns, only four to Beckett, and none to Myers. 11 went to Warren Griffith, almost 1,000 yards. Keontae Monroe had 748 yards, caught some touchdowns as well. And then Damian Jackson and Justin Rice. Looks like Rice didn't get as much production here as I thought he would, especially when you consider Myers' injury. He was out there every game, mostly, but just didn't really get the targets, I guess. Quandre Holt leads the team in sacks, and then Geo McFadden and Sean Overstreet almost got to 10. So Deion Myers is back. Joining a team that ranked 11th in scoring, 4th in passing yards, and then 10th in defensive points allowed. But the Giants are not able to make it to the Super Bowl this season. They destroyed Seattle in the first round, 44-3. But then, Tampa Bay gets the best of them, knocking them out in the second round. Three touchdowns in this game for Brian Petrovsky. Okay efforts here on the ground, and Dion Myers came back, put up 196 and 3. And unfortunately, that was not enough. We still lost by 11 points. Rough day for the defense. And it looks like the Bucks go to the Super Bowl to take on Denver. The Buccaneers have now won a Super Bowl in this series, as they beat the Broncos 38-16. Just wanted to see if they have anybody that we would recognize. Devontae Adams. Of course, a different Devontae Adams at receiver. But looks like he has the same amount of strengths as the Devontae Adams we all know. Just wanted to see if there's anybody from uh, past teams of ours that maybe got a championship. Hey, Matthew Riles, 33-year-old tackle. At least one. More players are reaching retirement. 2036 retirements. Bernie Pierman. We had just signed him. Jason Quinton has retired. After a couple of years in Atlanta. But Brian Petrovsky continues on. Petrovsky is no longer in the top five rated players on the team. As he's now a 90 overall, age 37. Ratings still have him as a top five quarterback, however. We're seeing Jaden Carroll go all the way up to a 95 overall by age 24 as he's reached superstar development as well. We have a few contract offers to make, starting with Dion Myers at age 31. I'd still like a three-year deal. I thought that was really fair. Quandre Holt just played out an extension that was a step below Aaron Donald's in real life. And now we're trying to sign him to a multi-year deal again that he will accept. Brian Petrovsky has reached the end of his contract. What if I try signing him to a two-year deal? He signs. No drama there. All right, we got a few more deals done, including Damian Jackson, who will come back. I just like having all these good tight ends on the team. Jamario Hopkins signed. Hearns declined. I think I want to franchise tag Dion Myers. Ty Scruggs has become available again. 
I'd actually be interested now in making a deal. I think we have the cap space to be competitive. We give an offer as well to Matthew Hearns. Oh, wow. Nick Gresham is down to a 79 overall. He wouldn't be a terrible fit with us now, but that's how fast the regression hit him, and that's kind of what I expected. He was like a low 90, but he was never an elite producer and only star devs, so I thought he was going to come down to earth pretty quick. But I think now I'd love to have him come back. We offered a lot of contracts, and only some of them were accepted. Ty Scruggs will not come back, and Matthew Hearns rejected us as well. I was surprised by this one. Scruggs is going to the Chargers instead. And then Matthew Hearns, he's just going to the Jets. So now we're already having to choose what we're doing with Jaden Carroll's fifth-year option. And of course, we're going to be picking it up. And then we have some new deals done here. We bring back Landry Haskins and then sign Glenn Pearson. In this year's draft, we started off with a 75 overall edge rusher, Kyle Frost, another hidden development player. They have knocked out these first round picks doing a really good job, especially with all of them late in the first round. I love this pick of Frost and then coming back with Ralph Smiley in the next round. So we double up on edge right away, which I don't mind. We haven't had great edge rushers in a while. And then we come back with an edge rusher in the fourth round, Dan Roosevelt. So significant boost to the pass rush. Now we could also use a starter at off ball linebacker. I don't know if Dion Southward is ready for that, but a really defensive heavy draft. We've again put together, I think, a pretty decent offensive line for this season. It's not hard to do in free agency. We still have some great playmakers. Hope for a big leap this year from wide receiver Justin Rice. But I'm excited to see if this defense can start developing a bit. Getting younger with Galloway becoming a number one and then Frost the rookie and Gabriel at D-tackle. But also, we have the reunion of the Landry Haskins-Nick Gresham safety duo. We do not win the division this year, but we did make it to the playoffs. We had one of the best offenses in the league, but it seems to be skewing a bit more run-heavy. Brian Petrovsky had 28 touchdowns to 16 interceptions, but Jaden Carroll finally had that big breakout season, and he racked up... 1,591 yards and 18 touchdowns. That's a terrific start. And his receiving production is growing every season. Justin Rice was the leading receiver. Deion Myers played all 17 games this time around, but now he's seeing the regression the way we just experienced with Rayshon Graham. That's a big year, though, for Rice. Happy about that. Tight ends contributing a ton. Kirk Galloway, new starting linebacker, racks up the most tackles. Holt, 11 sacks. I like nine here for Frost. That might be good enough for rookie of the year. Eight interceptions. They all came in pairs, it looks like. So, pretty good year for the Giants. We're not quite as dominant as we once were, but we've still made the playoffs every season of Brian Petrovsky's career. And we just missed on going back to the Super Bowl. We lost to the Lions by three. Really close. I thought we'd have a good chance to make it back. And get that eighth ring perhaps. But it's not going to happen this season. The title instead goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And MVP running back Tyler McDonald. So that's a matchup we actually saw earlier in this franchise. Steelers won that one in 2030. Brian Petrovsky now has 530 passing touchdowns in his career as he's topped 71,000 yards. Jaden Carroll already has 5,400 rushing yards. We just met him today. Warren Griffith, 752 career catches. That's incredible when you consider how long Jawan Johnson was dominant in this series, and there was some overlap with those two. Griffith has been playing a lot since 2029, 
158 sacks now for Quandre Holt. You got to wonder if that's it for him 14 years into his career. We have a few players I'd be thinking about as possible retirements this year, and perhaps Brian Petrovsky. He's approaching 40. Let's see what his choice is. Quandre Holt has retired. So did Zaire Grubbs, but Brian Petrovsky has not. He has gotten into the top 10 now for passing yards. He just passed Mac Jones. For passing touchdowns, he's behind Peyton Manning by nine. But how much longer does he decide to play? He's now a 90 overall at age 38. I gotta think it's one or two more seasons. He's still ranked number five, though. So I'm not exactly sure. He lost 11 points of uh, attributes this season. So we're probably just going to franchise tag Dion Myers again. Try to keep the offensive line together. This might be Petrovsky's last year, and we're going to try and... Do everything we can to win a championship this season. Got rejected by a couple players here again. I'm trying to build up this offensive line. It's not easy. We had plenty of cap space to keep offering deals, though. And I'm going up to like 150 points in some of these situations and still sometimes losing. We did pretty good in the first round here again. Kirk Phillips was our first round pick, a hidden development receiver out of Stanford. Love this pick, really well rounded. And then we come back with a running back in the second with hidden development, Clifton Kidd. We have done an outstanding job of drafting running backs today. He's a pretty good receiver. Maybe a better receiver than running back. The reverse of what I usually say is the case. No, maybe he is a better running back. Oh, wow, we have a hidden dev center right now, Matthew Chamberlain. We drafted him fairly late. He's a development player, but I love this. They got him in the seventh round, one of the last picks. No way. That's better than pretty much every seventh round pick I've made. A hidden dev center that can start. In the seventh round. Maybe he won't be great as a rookie. But in his second year, I bet he will. Still plenty to like with this offense. I think that we have a chance to return to the Super Bowl. As long as we have a healthy year. But you gotta wonder now the state of this defense without Quandre Holt. We don't have the same strengths that we once did. I'll fix up the depth chart here. But we'll see how it goes. 12 and 5. No, that was the Eagles who went 12 and 5. We went 9 and 8 and get in as a wild card. Oh man, the 14th ranked offense, the 19th scoring defense. Well, we're back in the playoffs. But is this a team that has a chance to go all the way? Carroll had a pretty good year. Petrovsky had a good year. Three players close to 1,000 yards. Justin Rice is the only one to actually get there. Jamario Hopkins, four interceptions. That's pretty good. Kyle Frost, nine and a half sacks. Oh, wait, we didn't even make the playoffs. For some reason, I thought we made it. We actually missed this year. My bad. So the Rams have been rebuilt basically in this episode. I want to say they picked first in like the first draft we went through today. And now they're playing in a Super Bowl. Interesting. The Rams have been terrible in this series. And they refuse to like ever address quarterback. They just sign whoever they could get who should be like backing up in the XFL. But now it appears it's a very different team. A lot of good players here that are uh, still fairly young. So that tells you they've done something right drafting. Paul Cox is the quarterback. When did they take him? So we've gone through, what, four drafts today? They selected him at the 1-1. So 
the Rams have been rebuilt here in this episode and now have a chance to win a Super Bowl against the Miami Dolphins, who have been pretty good in this series overall. And it does go to the LA Rams and quarterback Paul Cox is the MVP. Wow. That is an interesting development. So that wraps up yet another season for us. Could that be the end of the road for Brian Petrovsky with his first ever season missing the playoffs? Will he retire with 558 touchdowns and 75,000 passing yards? Looks like he's down to an 86. It would not be a bad time for Brian to call it a career at 39 years old. And by the looks of things, he's not finished yet. Isaiah Cunningham has retired. A couple veterans along the line did. But this team isn't what it once was. He wants to come back for his age 39 season. Oh, we can't let that happen. $40 million franchise tag. We just offered Dion Myers three years, 60 plus million. He's declining. Oh, wow, Jaden Carroll. I totally missed him here at the front. Superstar X Factor. Yeah. We just added him in this episode. And now he's signing a mega deal at running back. By the way, Warren Griffith is coming back this year. Now, I don't think he's accepted our deal for this coming season. But... He's probably going to have more catches in his career than Sean Graham did. A bunch of contracts accepted here from the first round. That's not bad as we've, again, just gone after all these older offensive linemen, kept around a lot of the veterans. Hal Reed's coming back as well. Another first round receiver for the Giants and our only player in the 70s in this draft class, Zach Scyther from Oklahoma. So we've certainly added a lot of receiving talent in recent years, and that's pretty exciting. We have a lot of options here that can hopefully help us have a top 10 offense again. You'd like it to be higher, but we are regressing as a team, and we're only 14th in scoring a year ago. How about this offense? I really think this team, this might be a great last ride for Brian Petrovsky. If he regresses further to like an 80 Oh, I'd just rather see him retire than have to see what that looks like. But this is a great offense to go and try to win one more Super Bowl. And the defense to help out. How about all these star dev players now? Made a lot of free agent moves. The draft picks have worked out overall. We had Frost and Roosevelt in the same class. This might be it. And it's going to be a great last attempt. Division champions once again. And we face the Rams in the wild card. Two top five offenses. They had a much better defense on paper. But here we are to meet the defending champions. Let's take a look at our numbers on the year. Petrovsky. That's more like it. A good step up from the last couple of years where he failed to reach 30 touchdowns. Jaden Carroll, 1,200 yards on the ground with 17 scores, 5 yards per carry. And Deion Myers, along with Justin Rice, go for over 1,000 yards. Now, Damian Jackson played a lot more than Warren Griffith this year. Griffith still played 800 snaps, but only had 15 catches. Kirk Phillips, 57 catches for him. And for this defense, 14 sacks for Devontae Johnson. He was a veteran I signed prior to this year, and he leads the team helping make up for the loss of Quandre Holt. And nobody had more than one interception. So this could be it. Is this the final playoff run for Brian Petrovsky? The Giants have defeated the LA Rams, putting up 456 yards of offense Three touchdown passes for Brian. Good day on the ground for both running backs. Justin Rice caught a pair of touchdowns and we advance. 
we defeat Tampa Bay and are going to the NFC Championship game. Brian Petrovsky, four touchdowns. So, on our road to the NFC Championship now, we have defeated the last two Super Bowl champions and will now face the Carolina Panthers. And that is where the run will end. 31-21. This is a team that we had a lot of success against in the initial run to the Super Bowl. Those first handful of runs. But they're a better team now, perhaps. And we fall one game short. 40 to nothing. I can't say much though. I watched a 41 to nothing NFC Championship game. First I ever saw. The Ravens win the Super Bowl this year over the Carolina Panthers. Is that it for Brian Petrovsky? Age 39, 86 overall. To me, that feels like the end. 18 seasons. He's now reached 80,000 yards, 590 touchdowns. He's been sacked 500 plus times. That has to add up in your 30s, Brian. Jaden Carroll, 94 touchdowns just in this episode. And just on the ground, he has 13 more receiving. Griffith and Myers, both uh, similar production at this point. 26 interceptions for Sergio Coles. Have we seen the end of Brian Petrovsky's football journey? 2039 retirements. Oh, he's coming back. Unbelievable. But Dion Myers has retired. Looks like I skipped that stage again on accident, so I have to make sure these count. I don't have a franchise tag. Brian Petrovsky is 40 years old, and he doesn't know when to quit. Looks pretty good for 40. And he's going to be offered another deal. $30 million. A lot of contracts accepted. Brian Petrovsky will be coming back. And a bunch more contracts have been signed. We've had a ton of cap space, so I'm going after all the best free agents, basically. A first round running back. But we did take three players who were over 70 overall this year. But we just keep taking hidden development running backs. Frank Taylor is the newest one. He looks really good. Edge rusher Clifton Nash. We just added a bunch of edge rushers, but get more depth with him. And a wide receiver here, Zach Jones. We have a lot to uh, replace now with Deion Myers retired. But we've been drafting so many receivers. To me, the previous year was a really good final attempt at a Super Bowl. I don't think this one's bad, though. We don't have Deion Myers, but we're still deep at receiver. There are a lot of options in this offense. You still have Carroll at running back, Jackson and Griffith at tight end, and a good offensive line. Defensively, we're seeing Frost develop even further. Don't have a deep secondary anymore, unfortunately. Just haven't been able to have much luck there. But the front seven is still pretty loaded for the most part. We have won this division yet again. 92 overall offense, too. We were sixth in scoring. Top 10 in both passing and rushing. Defense was just all right. Brian Petrovsky did not retire. He's playing into his 40s. Not many quarterbacks have done that. At 40 years old, Brian Petrovsky threw 32 touchdowns to 13 picks. Even as he regresses, he just puts up the same stat lines. And his regression didn't hit him hard at all. This last year, for some reason, I don't think he lost like anything. And then Jaden Carroll, 1,700 yards, 99 overall. That is a career high. Kirk Phillips is this year's leading receiver. A new leader, third-year player. 
Phillips with star development. He can really do it all for you. It's a whole new receiver group for Brian Petrovsky, but the results stay mostly the same. On defense, we have two double-digit sack players, Josh Gabriel, Kyle Frost. Very nice to see. And now a playoff run getting underway. I thought last year was it. This time at age 40, this has got to be it for Brian Petrovsky. And this time, it ends in the divisional round against the LA Rams. 35 to 28. Paul Cox has developed really well. The Rams are a totally different team after finally taking a quarterback. They just couldn't get it done this time. 72 yarder for Philip Beecham. I tried the trade for Vince Wilcox actually a couple off seasons ago, but I just didn't have the depth anymore to give up. It would take a lot more than a first round pick. He's one of the highest rated receivers in the game. Just couldn't make it work. But I don't think it's the lack of receivers that held us back. I think it's the defense falling off. The Houston Texans have won a Super Bowl now in this series. How about that? Haven't heard of them all series long. They show up here in the fourth quarter just to get one Super Bowl in Super Bowl 75. Very cool. But if that is it for Brian Petrovsky, he is going to end his NFL career with 84,957 passing yards and 622 touchdown passes. We'll check the all-time ranks here in a moment. Jaden Carroll has almost 10,000 rushing yards. We've been playing this so much today. Petrovsky is still third in passing yards. Approaching Tom Brady, but not yet there. For passing touchdowns, he's fourth with Trevor Lawrence ahead of him. Brady played in this series probably until 44, 45 years old. Brian Petrovsky at age 40. You have a decision to make, Brian. Here we go, 2040 retirements. And you gotta be kidding me. He won't quit. He won't give up. I've been here all day waiting. Alex Williams has retired after nine years. Petrovsky wants to play 20. 83 overall, Brian Petrovsky. Age 41, coming back for another season. He's been tied with Brady. Trying to break it. Six years running, he's failed to do so. He declined my offer. I don't want to tag him for 39. That's double. We'll come back. Looks like Kyle Frost has been a really good pick for us, and we will sign him to the Mega Extension. I'd like to also give Damian Jackson a big deal. A lot of these players have just declined, though. I'm probably going to tag somebody, but I think the, the best choice would probably end up being Dante Saunders just to have a good guard on the team. So Warren Griffith is actually a free agent. I wouldn't mind uh, a two-year deal, though. And again, we're just declined. Nobody is interested right now in Brian Petrovsky. No one's wanting to offer to a seven-time Super Bowl champion. Again, very busy in free agency. We do get Petrovsky to return and a lot of other free agents. I know these off seasons have all been pretty similar. It seems he's determined to top Tom Brady. The offense is intact. I like the receivers. We have nothing to do here. But is there more we can do on defense? All right, we have a few superstar players here. The safety situation has been tough because there just aren't good safeties hitting free agency. It feels like we need a big move on defense to put us over the top. This deal should go through for Titan safety Jalen Bates, six foot four, tall safety. Whenever we've been good in this series, we've had great safeties. 
and it's time to make a move there and that trade is accepted we're going all in we have given up our first round pick this year a first round pick next year and a current year third round pick to bring in a corner and we have added Braden Adams from the Kansas City Chiefs that is probably way too much to give up but I wanted another elite defender and he doesn't have a weakness you name it he does it Braden Adams is going to join the secondary we get a big boost here and this is basically our draft class it is trading for Adams and then the safety we just got from uh, the Titans, Jalen Bates. Our first pick didn't come until the fourth round. So it wasn't a great draft class or anything. It had no chance of being. But I think we have a team in place for one final Petrovsky season. I'm not sure it's going to be as good of a chance as some of the others. But I'm ready for one last ride. I didn't think we'd be here for this many seasons today. I believe this is our eighth of the episode. And Brian Petrovsky now sits at an 83 overall. Refusing to retire. He wants to top Tom Brady. And with a better defense, I think he has a chance to do it. That's a 15 and 2 season with the number 2 scoring offense and the number 1 scoring defense. We can't do much better than that. That's the best we got. Brian Petrovsky. 42 touchdowns. The 41-year-old throwing 42 touchdowns. A career high. Are you kidding me? In 2041? On the ground, Jaden Carroll, 1,700 yards rushing. Justin Rice and Zach Scyther all go over 1,000 yards. Damian Jackson, very close. Kirk Phillips, very close. And defensively, clearly things were a lot better. Four players with double-digit sacks. Kyle Frost, Josh Gabriel, Jose Johnson, and Cassidy Swinton. So these uh, signings continue to pay off for us. Braden Adams, four interceptions to lead the team. It looks like our efforts here were successful. But we came to win a Super Bowl, and the job isn't done yet. First opponent in the playoffs, the nine-win New Orleans Saints. They were the 28th scoring offense this year. And we just let them score 38 points and lost. how that could be how it ends 38 points wow 217 yards Devonte johnson what happened to the defense that was number one that was reconstructed what happened the rams just they go to the title game every year now Oh, I had never done that before. So you're telling me this year Brian Petrovsky won MVP. His first ever MVP, by the way. Over 20 years of dominant elite play, and he wins the MVP once at age 41. How is that even possible that he never won an MVP before? And he didn't even win a playoff game this year. The Rams have won their third title, I believe, of the day. Second or third? Paul Cox has two Super Bowl MVPs today. Russ Watson was coach of the year. Petrovsky was offensive player of the year. And now, that's got to be it, right? Almost 90,000 yards, 664 touchdowns for Brian Petrovsky. Jaden Carroll has 11,000 rushing yards. And we don't have as many long-term veterans on the team anymore that have been here a long time. Jamario Hopkins has. He has 22 interceptions, but that's not going to get you onto the leaderboards there. 
Paul Kraus is probably never getting caught. So, is that a 20-year career for Brian Petrovsky? I want to say that was year 20. And if that's it, it's been a fantastic run, even if he hasn't been to a Super Bowl in a while. But everybody's career has to end sometime. Warren Griffith decided that now was his year to retire. Brian Petrovsky, what do you say? Brian? Are you there? Brian, what is wrong with you? You're a 41-year-old man. Why do you have to still play football? He is now an 81 overall, 42-year-old quarterback who still has 89 speed, keep in mind. He only wants like $7 million. Probably play for free. He just wants to beat Brady. Wow, we had that contract rejected. That was a huge offer I made to Josh Gabriel. I gave him like a $100 million contract. You still like the receiver situation a lot. Three players, 89 or 90. All right, a lot of work to do along the offensive line still. We got Jackson at 97. Now, I don't think we have to do a ton here defensively. Maybe just boost up this line a little bit. We have a superstar corner though, Garrison Creer. Yeah, make him the slot. Superstar development drafted in the fifth round. The CPU is doing a phenomenal job. Remember Chamberlain, that center they drafted in the seventh? I just gave him a five year extension. Well, we didn't have a great draft this year. We took five players on defense, but it doesn't appear that any have good overalls. Oh, but hidden development sure changes a lot, doesn't it? Dakota Compton, welcome to the team. I just clicked on him randomly. Anybody else got hidden, Dev? This team knows how to draft, doesn't need me. Forest League has hidden development. That's pretty cool. Bobby Bishop, just normal. I can't believe Brian Petrovsky is 42 years old and is still playing football. At the beginning of this episode, we drafted Jaden Carroll, and he's now a 29-year-old running back who has gone for 1,000 yards every season of his career. For a while, we seemed invincible in this series. It was just always... Us ending up in the Super Bowl or at least getting close, but now we haven't been there since the first season we simulated today. So for seven straight years, we have not made it to a Super Bowl. We need to get back there. A 14-3 record puts us at the top of the NFC yet again. Behind the best running game in all of football. I love in this series how we went from having Saquon Barkley as the top running back to Tavares Towns as the top running back, and now Jaden Carroll running for almost 2,000 yards in his ninth season. We've been here so long today. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. Brian Petrovsky, 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns. Great stuff from him. Kirk Phillips is this year's leading receiver, and defensively, Kirk Galloway stuffs the stat sheet. Kyle Frost picks up 10 sacks. Six picks for Bates, four for Braden Adams. Those trades have worked. Those two produce. We've had great defenses now the last two seasons. It's just all about getting back to the Super Bowl. Chicago, we haven't seen them today. They're our first opponent here in the playoffs. And we have once again fallen short. Tampa beats us in the title game. Now we struggle to get back to the Super Bowl. 28 points in the fourth quarter. Defense, again, what are you doing? We built a great defense. And they've completely fallen apart in the Super Bowl. Or the NFC Championship. We're allowing way too many points in these games. And it's the Buccaneers who take the title this year, defeating the Tennessee Titans. But we have fallen short now. What is that, eight years in a row?
haven't even made it to the Super Bowl. I did not think we'd go through anywhere close to this many seasons today. I thought maybe three or four. So this is uh, quite a long recording session. Let's check out the leaderboards here. Petrovsky did top Brady in passing yards. So who would be the GOAT? They both have seven titles. Brady did it with two teams. He left New England, immediately won a Super Bowl in Tampa. Does that break a tie, you think, when you can have the same amount of rings, but you did it with two teams, two different head coaches? Petrovsky tops him in yardage. He's topped him in touchdowns. He just hasn't topped him in rings yet. I say yet because I don't know that we're done. I don't know that. At age 42, is it over? Brian Petrovsky ponders again what to do. And he's coming back at age 43. I've truly never seen anything like it in Madden. My quarterbacks in these series have never played this long. Brian Petrovsky is 43 years old. He just declined an $8 million deal. This year we went with a guard of the first round. John Austin Hidden Development. They just keep finding hidden development players. Then we come back to Marcus childers a tight end seems to be a very good fit for what we like to do at receiver and then jelani killings a corner out of ohio state not bad i'm impressed with how the cpu has drafted i haven't made any picks today and they've done a good job filling in gaps on this roster i can't believe we're doing this again i can't Carroll is 30 years old. It's his 10th season. If he retires before Brian Petrovsky, it's going to be the funniest thing I've ever seen. I had no idea what we were getting into today. I just want to see us win one more Super Bowl if Petrovsky is going to play this long. The man is 43 years old. He still runs like a 4-5, 40-yard dash. Just get him a Super Bowl again. We have to go through the playoffs as a wild card. We were the number 14 offense this year. I'm guessing Petrovsky has taken a step back. A more noticeable one. 22 touchdowns, 6 picks. Did he miss some time? A quarterback injury in this game? Are you kidding me? Quarterbacks don't get hurt in Madden 22. But Petrovsky did at age 43. Still a fine season, but he missed three games. And John Quincy had to play in his spot. Jaden Carroll, 1,500 yards on the ground, 15 touchdowns, 10 years, a steady play from him. Zach Scyther, 1,000 yards through the air. Damian Jackson is close. Jaden Carroll continues to uh, improve his passing production as well. Four picks for Anton Patton. All right, yeah, we signed him. Just to boost up the secondary across from Braden Adams. Lorenzo Knighton leads the team in sacks. Brought him in. There's always free agents available to bring in for like D-line and offensive line. 96,000 yards. If he comes back next year, he could legitimately throw for 100,000 yards. He has 714 touchdowns. Jaden Carroll has 14.9K yards on the ground. If he plays one more year, he's going to be on this leaderboard. I can't believe that. But can this team really handle a wild card gauntlet going on the road? We'll see about that. No way. We made it back. We're in the Super Bowl. We did it. 
We put up a bunch of points. The defense did not collapse. We're going back to the Super Bowl. I can't believe it. At 43 years old, Brian Petrovsky is going to the Super Bowl again. One more. I feel like with all this buildup and everything that's happened today, this Super Bowl deserves its own video. This has been the most successful franchise I've run. And they have a chance to get their eighth title. I think it deserves more than a quick simulation. I want to do one more episode. And I don't want to just go through a couple of drives in this one. We waited a long time to get back to the Super Bowl. Or I have at least simulating today. I have no idea how long it's going to be like in video. I don't know what this is going to look like. But for me, it's been four hours or so of recording. Waiting for this man to retire. He won't do it. He wants that eighth title. And I think we should watch him go win it. Once he retires, I think I'm going to stop managing the team entirely. And then I want to simulate to the end of the career of Jaden Carroll. Just because he's already on the doorstep of so many records. We might as well see where he ends up to he's only 30 he's got a couple more years in him i'd say at least i thought this was going to be the final episode i've been working on ending this series now for a while what's one more video right if he doesn't retire at the end of next year or at the end of this season we just gotta force him into retirement i think what happened to his captain thing? Okay, I guess when he was a free agent, he lost it. At age 43, we're going to watch Brian Petrovsky try to win a Super Bowl. And break Tom Brady's record. That is going to be coming your way next time. I think that'll be the true, true finale. Go through the Super Bowl. Sim to the end. Even if we lose, he's got to retire. He's got to retire. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Looking forward to your feedback. Leave your thoughts below in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And I will see you all in Brian Petrovsky's final Super Bowl next episode. Thank you all for watching the video. And I will see you all next time.